everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today I'm going to do the Hot Lips Hula Hand Tag. This tag was created by Lady Lulu on Beauty and she tagged me in it a long time ago, which I was unaware of <laughs> until recently when I was also tagged to do the video by Jerry over at Hello Jerry and by Tammy at Uppies Beads 59. So thank you all three of you for tagging me to do this video. I really appreciate it, especially because this is one tag that is actually in my wheelhouse, as they say. Uh, a lot of the tags that go around are created by younger people. So in this one, the questions more pertain to uh, aging women. And so I felt like this was the perfect tag to do because it does address a lot of our issues. Now, Hot Lips was a character from the sh TV show MASH that was on in the uh, 70s or early 80s, I want to say. So in honor of Hot Lips, I'm wearing a hotter lip than I usually ever wear. So uh, let's go for it. Question number one. In 100 words or less, describe your winter and summer skin types. I have combination oily skin. So most of my skin is normal and I have an oily T-zone. I also have super sensitive skin and I also am breakout prone. So in the winter, while my skin does get a little bit drier, uh, I would never call my skin dry overall. It does on occasion have a flaky patch in like the really super dead of winter because I live here in New England and between the heat and the dry air, your skin can't help but become a little bit alligatory no matter what you do. Anyway, I don't know if that was 100 words. Question number two, what eye cream did you use last night? Uh, I do not use a separate eye cream. I don't believe in them. I, you know, <laughs> I believe that they exist. I'm not sure that you actually need one. I am using what I consider to be the best anti-aging ingredients in my skincare. I use tretinoin cream, which is Retin-A, I use vitamin C serum, and I use glycolic acid. I also use a serum that has amino peptides and hyaluronic acid and more antioxidants, and I use a moisturizer that has ceramides and niacinamides. But everything that I put on my face, I put underneath my eyes as well and on my eyelids. The only thing that doesn't go on my eyelids is my Retin-A. I know a lot of people have worse eye problems than mine, and in that case, obviously, you need to try to do something about them, but I don't have big bags, I don't have dark circles, I just have wrinkles, so all my wrinkle creams go on there. So that is my answer about eye, eye creams. Question number three, how is the hunt going for a neck cream? Again, I don't use a separate neck cream. Everything that I put on my face also goes down my neck, also goes on my chest, also goes on the backs of my hands. So, you know, buying separate products for every part of my body, I don't do. Uh, the stuff that I use to treat my face is more expensive, so I can't afford to do it everywhere on my body. If it was cheaper, I would use everything head to toe, <laughs> but I can't afford Retin-A for my entire body, so I can't do that. Question number four. What skincare products are helping you win the war on aging? Well, it's the same stuff I just told you about. <laughs> um, I really love my Tretinoin cream. Uh, Retin-A, I think, is the best thing. It's the gold standard. It has 20 years of research to back it up, and I know there's a lot of talk lately about uh, glycolic replacing Retin-A, and it might. Uh, but for me, I am able to use both, and so I'm going to keep using both. So I use the what I consider to be the triple threat of anti-aging ingredients, which is Tretinoin, Vitamin C serum, and I use glycolic acid. And that, I think, as I said, is the triple threat against wrinkles, against uh, skin discolorations, against uh, sagging skin, against everything. Now, obviously, you're going to still age. It's not going to make you look like you're 20 again. Nothing is going to make you look like you're 20 again. But that's what I have found to be the most effective regimen. Number five, do you still use black eyeliner? Well, I never really use black eyeliner, so I can't say that I still use it. I don't have the most... Um, big beautiful eye shape and I feel like black liner just kind of closes my eyes down and makes them look much smaller. So I use gray and I love gray and I still use eyeliner every day. That's like my one go-to thing. I don't leave the house without eyeliner on. I could go out without any other makeup but eyeliner is the thing that I like to wear every day. Not black though. Number six, is face powder your friend or your enemy? I love face powder. Uh, being an oily girl, face powder is definitely my friend. My number one go-to favorite foundation right now is a powder. So yeah, I love face powder. I use the IT Cosmetics Celebration Foundation. 
almost on an everyday basis, and it's a powder, and I love it. Uh, that even sometimes is too glowy and dewy for me, and so then I will powder over that with another powder. But I think the thing with powder is to use it sparingly. On older skin, if you build up a lot of it, it can look bad. So if you find that you've put it on and it's too heavy, a spritz with a setting spray really helps. You have to be careful with powder, but I think it's still our friend. I think it's still my friend, definitely. Question number seven, do you care if blush has sparkle? Yes, I do. Uh, one of my very favorite brush blushes is the Milani Baked Blush in Dolce Pink. I love this stuff. I was using it every day last year. But what I discovered is that when I looked at my face in my close-up mirror every night, the, the pink of the blush was worn off, and I, all I had left was golden flecks of sparkle all over my cheeks, and I didn't think that that was very good luck. I'm not so much into sparkle. I like it to have a sheen. Uh, so more of a satin finish is good. The one that I love right now is the NYX blush in Peach. Question eight, any makeup tricks to make you look more youthful? Well, yes, uh, lots and lots of makeup tricks. <laughs> the biggest ones are for the hooded eyes because you know if you've had hooded eyes all your life, they're actually quite lovely. Now that I'm older and they are saggy and crepey, that's when it becomes a problem, when it's actually laying on your eyelashes. I get so many comments now where people are asking me, what did you do to your eyes? Did you have an eye lift? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I didn't have an eye lift. I've learned to use makeup better. So I think the number one thing for hooded eye girls is to really practice in front of the mirror with makeup and get good at it so that you can, you can totally disguise that hood. And I also think accentuating what you've got that is still good is a great makeup trick to make you look younger. All right, question number nine. Give your beauty sisters of a certain age three quick makeup tips. I can't say that they're gonna work for everyone, but it's what I was just talking about with the hooded eyes. Learn to disguise your hoods. And there are lots of videos on YouTube to show you how to do that. Number two, I would say, is be careful where you put your blush. Uh, start putting your blush on at the back and top of your cheekbone and come forward, but don't come forward all the way to the apple of your cheek. I know in the past you've always heard to smile and then put the blush on the apple of your cheek, but I'm telling you, once we get to be older, our the quality of our cheeks is a little weird because you have this you know depression here in the tear trough. I think to start the blush at the back and have it fade as it comes forward is a better look. Number three would be to fill in your eyebrows so that they frame your face. All right, moving on. Question 10. Are you using any weapons of mass destruction on your aid spots? Currently, no, but I have in the past. I have never done a true laser treatment yet. I did do a series of four IPL treatments, and I gotta say the first treatment was fantastic. It made like all these spots come to the surface and crust up and slough off, and it was great. I got a set of four, which I kind of wish I had only done the first one, but I would have never known if I hadn't done four. Also, the weapon of mass destruction that is my favorite for age spots is liquid nitrogen. I go to my dermatologist every year for my annual skincare checkup, and if I have any age spots that are newer coming up, I just have her give them a blast with that liquid nitrogen. My copay is $40, and since I'm there for a medical reason, it covers everything that she does. It's quick, it's, it's uh, semi-permanent, and it's fairly painless, so that's my favorite. Does the phrase thinning hair have a special meaning to, to you? Um, no, it does not. My hair is not thinning at all. Uh, very fortunate to be able to say that. Number 12, which looks younger, your hands or your neck? Well, I'm going to go with my neck. Um, I have working hands. I don't feel like my hands have looked young since I was you know, 25. I garden, I bike, I'm out in the sun, I clean my dishes and all that stuff. I've never worn rubber gloves or really babied my hands in any way. Number 13, which bothers you most? 11s, crow's feet, or lip lines? Well, it's got to be my 11s because I have been blasting them away with Botox for probably about seven years now. Because it was my first wrinkle and it was the wrinkle that I felt like it made me look angry all the time to have those 11s there, I got rid of that one right away. Number 14, have you had to pluck a chin hair yet? No, I have not had to pluck a chin hair. I am practically a naked mole rat. I really am not a furry person. I don't have a lot of facial fur. Um, a lot of people are always writing in and asking me what to do about your mustache once you start going on Retin-A because you can't wax it anymore because it rips your 
skin right off with your fur. I don't have that problem, so I don't really have any answer for people. Which leads me right into the next question, what do you do about your mustache? But I did think of something for people who do use Retin-A and have been waxing and now you can't wax anymore. I was at the store the other day and I saw that Olay product where the gal has like a feather up to her lip. Um, I think it's like a depilatory thing where it's some kind of a cream that you put on that dissolves your hair and I'm wondering if that would work better for people who use Retin-A. Uh, so give it a try and let me know if it works. Who knows, I may, I may need it someday. But for now, no, no mustache. <laughs> okay, I'm chuckling at the next question. How many pairs of reading glasses do you own? More than I care to count. Um, you know, like everybody else, you start off with one. Now I need them everywhere. I need one to grocery shop. I need one to make videos. This is my this is my office pair. I get these at Peepers. I just love them. Peepers uh, PeepersSpecs.com. This is style number 503. It's actually a men's style, but I love the bamboo sides, and it's kind of like a nerdy cool thing. Unfortunately, they do glare off my lights, so I don't like to wear them a lot in my videos. Did I say my purse? Yeah, I got I've got two in my purse. Uh, I've got sunglasses readers. It's a bifocal so that when I'm on the beach I can read my book and have uh, distance vision as well. So yeah, lots. Lots of pairs of readers. Alright, I really love this question. You win your choice. <laughs> yes. Neck lift, eye lift, boob lift, or tummy tuck. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, it's funny now. I always said that I would get an eyelid lift when I turned 50. Well, I'm 51 and I haven't had the eye lift done yet. And I'm so grateful that I went on this journey into taking better care of my skin and started a year ago because over the course of the year using Retin-A and everything else, I don't feel like I need an eye lift anymore currently. And then there's also new therapies coming up all the time. Like this year I want to try Ulthera to get a tiny bit of lit, more lift in there so that I can really put off getting an eyelid lift longer. A year ago I would have said eyelid lift. Right now, boob lift. <laughs> I would go for a boob lift in a heartbeat. My gosh, I just went out and spent another 250 bucks on three bras last week trying to get my boobs to be where they're supposed to be and look like they're supposed to look instead of like a couple of empty gym socks stuck to the front of my chest. <laughs> it is ridiculous. I don't really want an augmentation. I don't want bigger boobs. I just want them to be, you know, higher and that would be great. All right. So, so yeah, boob lift. <laughs> What's the next question? Are you more concerned about wrinkling or sagging? Currently, my bigger problem is wrinkles. You know, like I said, I've been getting rid of these 11s for seven years already. I have not done a thing about sagging or even really thought about sagging yet. So definitely wrinkles. My eye wrinkles are really starting to bother me and these lip wrinkles also are kind of kind of getting me. Okay, question number 19. Do you go sleeveless to Walmart in the summer? Uh, yeah, why wouldn't I? When it's air conditioned in places, then yeah, I bring a sweater or a sweatshirt so that when I go inside and it's freezing inside, I have something to cover up with. It's a comfort thing. I don't think we should all be embarrassed about our skin. I would like to see as we get older people be able to just be comfortable and just be themselves and not worry so much about what other people think of their wrinkles or their sags or their whatever. I mean, I'm kind of a contradiction because I spend a lot of time fighting this stuff. I want to fight it and fight it and fight it. And yes, I work out hard. I work my arms. I especially like my arms. And I feel like women, as we get older and as a lot of the um, weight redistributes and shifts, our arms are often the better part of our body because the weight tends to settle in a downward motion. <laughs> so if you've noticed that you're putting on weight around your middle where you never had it before or in your hips and thighs, guess where it's coming from? <laughs> All up in here. You'll notice there's like less fullness up in your chest. There's less fullness in your arms. That means that if you start working them out, you'll get better muscle tone and you'll be able to see it quicker. So, you know, I am all for lifestyle and exercise as a very important aspect to anti-aging. In 20 years when my surface skin is all wrinkly, will it embarrass me? Probably. Am I never wearing a sleeveless shirt again for the rest of my life? No. And I find it sad to hear other people saying that they aren't. Um, you know, the length of shorts. I had on in one of my videos uh, so, some really super shorty McShort shorts and I was like, oh my gosh, these are probably a little age inappropriate for me. The same video, I was wearing a skirt that was two inches above my knee. Some people wrote in that even the skirt was too short. I mean, it's ridiculous. Because I'm 51, I have to wear a maxi skirt and, you know, long sleeves and a turtleneck for the rest of my life. 
as I said in that video, I am 51. I'm not dead. Everyone wants to tell us how to dress, what parts of our body to expose, what styles we can wear our hair in. I am just so tired of everyone deciding that they can tell older women what is appropriate. What is appropriate is what's appropriate for you, your body type. These rules, I'm tired of them. I want them to be broken. I want us to all take out our sledgehammers and hammer away at these rules. I would encourage people if if your wrinkly skin doesn't make you uncomfortable, or if being hot makes you more uncomfortable than being judged by people over your wrinkly skin, then go for your own personal comfort. Why are we all sacrificing our own personal comfort for the comfort of other people that we don't know, that we are never going to see again? We are all going to have wrinkles someday. It's just the way it is. It is unavoidable if you're lucky enough to live that long, and I hope we are all lucky enough to live that long. All right, so I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I talked way longer than I had intended to about that one. And the final question, number 20, the best memory of your mother's beauty routine. My favorite memory of my mother's beauty routine is not so much a routine thing, but I came home from school one day when I was fairly little, probably in like kindergarten, or maybe I was out playing in the neighborhood with the neighborhood kids, but I came home and my mother and her best friend were laying upside down on the sofa with face masks on uh, watching their soap operas <laughs> and came home was like what are you guys doing but they were having a blast so yeah that's the best memory that I have of my mom's beauty routine uh, from when I was a child so that is the 20th and final question so I wanted to thank you guys all for spending some time with me today take care and I will see you next time bye bye